Hey loves, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to be giving you a tour of my Notion template. I feel like I've literally been meaning to do this forever. So some of you use my older template, but I've got a new one. I've been using this one now for about five months and I love it so much more than my old one because I've took like I've taken a lot of stuff off. And guys, listen, I really feel like simplicity is sustainable when it comes to plan planning. So I think that's why I prefer this template is because it's a little less busy. Um, so I'm going to show you the template today. It is for free. The link will be in the description. Everything is going to be timestamped below. So if there's only a particular page that you're interested in, then fine. If you only want to know how to customize some things, feel free to skip ahead. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be a long video. So let's just go straight into it. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed the template. Don't forget to like and subscribe, especially if you're using the template. And yeah, hope you enjoy it. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to start by showing you how to duplicate my templates, so how you actually use it. So when you open up the link that I put in the description below, it should look a little something like this. So the first thing that I want to say is that I've optimized this whole setup for my Mac. So if you have a different size screen, you might have to move stuff around a little bit just to get it all to be on like a similar nice layout. But when you open it, it should look something a little bit like this. Now, if we come up into the top right hand corner here, you can see a little button that says duplicate. So all you need to do is press on that and then log into Notion. So mine's just logging me in automatically. So if you have an account, it should do this. If not, then just sign up and um, start an account. And it will basically just copy my whole, whole template to your Notion. So now you can use my whole template. At the end of the video, I show you literally how to customize everything on here. So if you don't like my colors, if you don't like my aesthetics and you want to change it to fit yours, um, just stay tuned for the end of the video and I'm going to show you how to literally do everything that you need to do. Let's start by going through my dashboard. So this is kind of like my home page. So when you open up my Notion, this is what it looks like. As you can see, I've got five different pages within my Notion. So life, academia, content creation, thesis writing and coding. They each have their own individual photo. I just feel like this is a nice way to lay it out. Um, so at the end, we'll see how to replace those pictures and replace all the icons and everything like that. So basically when you click into these, it will take you into the relevant pages, but we'll go through each individual page in just a second. Um, so what do we have then on the home page? So on the left hand side here, I have a little quick link. Um, these are all embedded within these pages. So I'll show you all of those when we go into the other pages. On the right hand side, I have a monthly overview calendar. So basically what I do is I put up all like important dates and important meetings in here just to make sure that I don't forget anything. Then on the left hand side here, I have my three favorite lo-fi playlist. I love having these on my Notion because I like to just hit play when, for example, I'm filling out my to-do list for the week. Um, so you can play all of these within Notion, as you can see. Then at the bottom here, I have a Monday through to the weekend to-do list. So basically this is where I write my to-do list each morning. As you add things, you can like tick them off. So it's not ticking off, <laughs> there we go. Um, so yeah, you can tick things off there as well. So love doing my to-do list on Notion. So guys, as you can see, or as you'll see as we go through, my Notion template has changed a lot from my last one. This one is a lot simpler and there's a lot less stuff on here, but I found that this one, has been so much easier to stick to compared to my old template because it's a lot simpler. So simplicity is really key when it comes to planning, for me at least, like things have to be simple and easy in order for me to stick to them. So that's really the theme that we have going with this notion. So now let's go into my life page. So let's click on here. So first of all, let me show you an overview of what the life page looks like said here, this area of my notion is mainly like for gym tracking and it's kind of like a brain dump area of my notion. So I actually don't use this page too much um, apart from my gym tracking section, which we'll see in a second. But I highly recommend that if you're into like finance, like if you're into budgeting or you're into reading and you like to track your reading, you should add this all in your in this section here. Um, but what I have on here is just free cute gifts. <laughs> I have two quotes here. And then I have a Spotify playlist as well, because like I said, I like to play these while I'm filling things out on my Notion. The main part of this is that I have a little goals section, which is basically, I write myself goals kind of like every week, every two weeks. And I try and check back each week to see if I've managed to do them. Moving down, I have another um, to-do list. 
Um, and this, I basically focus more on life admin. So the one that's on my dashboard is kind of like my everyday to-do list. So things that I need to do mainly for like my PhD and stuff. But this is kind of just like life admin. So for example, if I need to like book an MOT or I need to like book a vet appointment or whatever, I put it in here because it's more life related. So that's why I have two separate to-do lists. One is more like for my everyday jobs and this one is more for life admin. So most of the time it's empty. I don't know how I get away with a lot, not doing a lot of life admin, but apparently I do. Moving down then, I have my gym goals and tracking. So uh, yeah, I use it for the gym. Basically the idea is I have all the days of the week down here. And basically this is how I feel like I manage to work out and like get to the gym is because I try and schedule each week, like literally on a Monday or a Sunday, I sit down and I schedule what it is exactly that I'm gonna be doing in the gym that week. And I write down times to do it. So for example, today is Monday. So I have basically scheduled that I wanna be at the gym for 6 p.m. And today I'm gonna be doing weights and cardio. Basically, I write down what it is that I'm gonna be doing and then I put my goals. So this obviously doesn't align very well. <laughs> Um, but it's just a template just to show you kind of what I do. So basically on my actual notion in there, it would basically say like what workout I'm going to be doing in the gym and like what are my goals? So like what weights do I want to lift? Blah, blah, blah. And then a little extra. So basically I will write down when I come back from the gym, how I did. And also um, I kind of write down if I've signed up to any classes there, just so I don't forget to go to those as well. So then on the right hand side there, I've got three more quotes to motivate me when I'm filling out these, these goals. So that is my life page. Again, fairly simple, um, but that's how I like it. Feel free to add, take away whatever you want. So now let's go into the academia page. So this is probably the one that you guys are most interested in. So this is basically how I keep track of all of my PhD work and all of my side projects that I work on for my PhD. So again, up top there, we have a quote. I have a little document section here. So I have a backlink back to my main page. I have um, a link to my thesis writing page and then also a link to the papers to read page, which I'll show you in just a second. I have a little clock widget here, lost my words there. Um, and at the end of the video, I show you how to get this clock widget and also how to get this weather widget and also a countdown wi widget, which we'll see in just a second. So at the end, I'll show you how to replace those to suit you. Okay, coming down to the upcoming deadline section. So this is where I keep track of like PhD admin. So for example, like if I need to submit an abstract to a conference, if I need to prepare a presentation, if I need to prepare a journal club, for example, I pop it all in here. And I really like this because you can like move it around and see like what you need to do, what you're working on and things like that. Coming down then into the general PhD tracking. So basically I put a little note here explaining what I actually use this section for, but it looks like a to-do list, but it's not. Basically what I do in this part is I write down each, at the end of every day, I come back to this part of my notion and I write down exactly what I've done that day. And then I will use that to basically write myself some notes for the next day. So I'll write a note for myself saying that what I need to do the next day, for example. I also use this area of my notion in every single lab meeting. So in the lab meetings, I basically come back to this area of my notion and I have wrote down every single day what I've done so that I don't forget to tell my supervisor anything or ask him anything that I need to ask him. So that's what I do for my general PhD, moving down into the side project tracking. So I work on quite a few side projects. Um, so the way that I keep track of each individual side project is that I have an individual card for each of them. So if we click on this, basically what I have is like the title of the project there and in here you can add notes, you can add files, you can add own individual to-do lists, which I find really useful. But the thing that I like is that I put in the title here, like what it is that I actually need to do next for that individual project. So it's really nice to come to this part of my notion and go to each side project and I can just see what I need to do. So for example, if I find that I have like an hour at the end of the day to work on something, I'll normally come here and see what I have time for. Um, and I try and update that as we go. So that's how I keep track of my side projects and my general PhD stuff. Coming back then, let's go into my content creation. So I know that probably not everyone 
watching this is gonna be into content creation. So if not, everything is timestamped below. So feel free to just skip to the thesis writing page. But for those of you who are into content creation, um, this is exactly how I am trying to keep track of my content. So I'm really bad at scheduling like posts across different platforms and trying to plan ahead or like bulk content, but I'm trying to get better at it. So this is how I'm trying to get better at it basically. <laughs> So first up down the end, down the left here, I have links to all of my socials. I have helpful links. So things like YouTube Studio, um, links, which is like my version of Linktree that I use and Canva, just because I use them really often. So it's handy to have them as links there. I've got another two gifts there and a nice quote. So this is what I use as a content calendar. So basically the way that I've been using this is I will basically put in each day what I'm gonna be posting or to be honest, I don't post each day. So I'll, I normally post like once or twice a week. So I will basically like just schedule my posts. So I'll write down for the month, like what I'm gonna be posting and when I'm gonna be posting it. Um, I am quite bad at sticking to it, but maybe you'll be better than me and find it a little bit more useful. Um, but this is probably the thing that I use the most, which is basically like this little table where I keep track of any ideas that I have for content creation. So basically, I'm always thinking of like random ideas at random times, and it's just handy to have somewhere to write them down. When I think of posts, I just come here and I write them down. So basically, I write down all of my ideas here, and then I have this little tag section where I write down what platform I'm gonna be posting it on. And then I have a little status for the actual individual job itself or idea itself. So if I feel like I wanna do a post, I've got a spare hour, I wanna do a post, I come back to this area and I have a bunch of ideas of things that I can post about. Or like, for example, you know when you just have a picture that you wanna post, but you're like, I don't know what caption I'm gonna put with this. I just come here and I've got a bunch of ideas like ready to go, so that's good. And then I'll basically just tick them off as and when I do them. So that is an overview of my content creation page. Again, quite simple, but that's exactly how I like it. So let's now go back and let's go into my thesis writing page. On the right hand side, I try and keep track of my thesis goals. So I basically just set goals for myself of like what things I wanna complete. So do I wanna finish my plots for chapter two? Do I wanna start writing something for chapter three? And things like that. And the way that I factor in these goals is that I pop them on my chapter writing planner. So I basically, I write my goals here and then I add them, like I put them into action here by adding particular times that I want to have things done by. So for example, I'll just put like, I wanna, I don't know, like finish chapter one results by this particular date, right? Obviously these are just made up dates, but it's just so you can see how I do it. Um, so that's how I keep track of how much of my thesis I'm writing, which by the way, at the moment, just to make you feel better, I'm doing absolutely awful with writing my thesis, but the intentions are there guys. <laughs> Figure planner, I absolutely love this. I haven't used it so much for my thesis yet, but I've definitely used it when I've been writing up my um, research papers. So basically what I do is I just write down like what chapter it's gonna be in or what section of the paper. And I write down what the actual plot is gonna be. And then I just tick it off as I'm done it or as I'm doing it. Within here, I also have this um, papers to read section. So this is how I keep track of um, reading research papers. So how I try and stay on top of it. So basically every single time I see a paper that I wanna read, I come here and I add it in here. So I basically just write down the title. I tag the author here because basically you can filter this table to basically just show you like one author, for example, which I think is really useful. So if there's like one author who's worked on something really similar to you, you can just filter it to get all of their papers, which I find is really nice. I have a little status section. So I write like whether I'm in the process of reading it, whether I've read it or it's I still need to read it. Um, sometimes I'll add the link to the paper and then I have a little section here for notes. So for example, if I'm in the middle of reading it, I might write a note for like where I got up to or anything like that, or I might just write some notes that I have on the paper. Um, then I have a little section here about whether I've added it to my thesis or not. So this just makes sure that I actually add these papers to my thesis once I've read them. So once I've ticked added to thesis, it will basically disappear. So I know that like, okay, I'm done with that now. It's in my thesis, no need to worry about it. So yeah, that's how I keep track of reading research papers and more importantly, adding them to my thesis. Also within here, I have a little random note section, which as you saw is on my dashboard as well. So this is basically just where I keep all of my notes. Um, so 
this obviously isn't, these obviously aren't actually my notes. They're just, it's just a template, but this is kind of what mine looks like. So I have them split up into different sections. So for example, I have a section on statistics where I keep notes on stats that I need to know about. I have a little sections for each of my papers that I'm writing up and I keep notes there. So basically you can add in like to-do lists, you can add files, you can add YouTube videos. So that's really useful. And then I'll have a little section for like workshops and conferences that I've been to. So again, I'll just write down any interesting things that I learned at the workshop or at the conference basically. So that's how I organize my notes. And that is an overview of my thesis writing page. Okay, so moving on to the very last page before we move on to how to customize my Notion. This is where I just keep notes for R programming and Python programming. Again, I've put another um, lo-fi playlist there and I've also popped one of my Code With Me's here. So if you're into coding and you want a coding study buddy, come and code with me. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically these are the exact same thing. Again, this is not actually my Notion, it's just my templates and my notes are a little bit more detailed, obviously because these aren't actually notes, but it's just an example of how I keep track of my notes for coding. So basically I embed like code snippets and I write a little bit about like what each code snippet is doing and things like that. And you can change the language there. So maybe if you're working with, I don't know, Swift instead of R, you can change it and it will just highlight things differently and appropriately. Um, and yeah, the Python section looks the exact same. So there we go. So that is an overview of my whole notion now. Um, but now let's move on to how to customize this and how to make it fit your aesthetic if you're not a fan of mine. Let's go through this quite quickly. So let's start with changing the covers on top of all the pages. So at the top of each page, I have an individual cover. So to change these, you just hover over here, you click on change cover. You can pick from any of these pictures or colors, or you can upload your own image, um, or you can put a link to an image there. So that's how you change the covers. Changing the icon. So the icons are these little pictures here on each individual page, so these. Changing these, again, is quite simple. So you just hover over it, you click on it, and then it will basically just let you do the exact same thing. So you can pick from emojis, you can upload an image or a link. So it's the exact same for all of those. So I normally upload an image or I actually upload a link. So all of the GIFs that you see on my page, so for example, all of these that we have here um, across my page that are all GIFs, I get them all from this website called Giphy. So you go ahead, type in whatever you're, you want. So I've just done kawaii there. So you can use these GIFs here, which are um, cool. So I use these on my pages, or you can use these stickers, which are the ones without a background, which I think are nice as icons. So you want to go ahead, click on it, right click, copy image address. Let's come back into Notion. And then you go ahead and you click on link and you just copy and paste that link in there and it will upload your GIF there for you. So that's a great place to get the GIFs. I've got all of mine from there. Next up then, fonts on the page. So you can change fonts really easily within Notion by clicking the three dots on the top right hand corner and you can pick from three different fonts as you can see. Um, I prefer, however, to get some different kind of fonts that aren't available in Notion. And the way that you can do that is again, coming to Google and you wanna to go to this site called Lingo Jam text fonts. So what you can do is type in whatever you want there and it will give you up a bunch of different fonts here. And then you can just copy and paste those and you can pop them onto Notion just like that. So just tons of different fonts that you can choose from that are not available on Notion. So I love using those. Um, then as well to change the colors of things so where i've put all the different colored backgrounds or if you don't want black text you want to change it to pink or blue whatever color you want you go to the little text you click on these dots here and you can come to color and you can change the backgrounds here or you can change the font color here moving down then i have obviously quite a lot of youtube videos linked across my notion so if you want to change any of these then again, you hover over it and you click on these three little dots and you click on replace and you would just copy and paste the link to the YouTube video that you want to put there. 
um, just like that. And it's kind of very, very similar as well for the Spotify playlist. So again, you hover over there, you click on replace, and then you would copy and paste in there your the link to the Spotify playlist that you want to embed. So that's really simple as well. Next up are the two last things as well, um, which is how to change these pictures. So again, it's the same kind of process is you hover over and you click on replace and you can upload your image here. But only one thing to, worth mentioning here is that it's really hard to resize pictures within Canva. So the way that I got all of these pictures to be the exact same size, I'm um, sorry, it's really hard to resize them in Notion. So the way that I got them to be the same size is that I actually made them all within Canva. Um, so I made them all the exact same size. This is the size that I used, if anyone's interested. Um, no, it wasn't. This is the size that I used. <laughs> so if anyone is using them, make sure you use 1080 times 1350. But yeah, I just made them all the exact same size. And then I clicked on download. Make sure you download them as a PDF. And then I just replaced them all there. So that's how I did that. It was the exact same for all of them. So for these as well, um, I made them all within Canva. Last up then is how did I make all of the widgets here? So the clock widget, the weather widget, and also the countdown widget for my thesis, which we saw on my thesis writing page. So to do this, I use this website called, um, get rid of that now, I use this website called Indify, which is literally a site for Notion widgets. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how to make the uh, countdown app. It's fairly similar, like the process is the exact same for all of those. Um, you can also make all of these different ones like Google Calendar, Life Progress Bar, you can add some quotes, etc. But yeah, let's go ahead. So I always skip this bit, I don't bother adding a title. So for my thesis one, I put the um, event title as thesis due in, so whatever your countdown is for. Then you basically just need to set the time and date that um, it's, you know, what you're trying to count down to. You can choose here how much you want to um, display. And you can also change, obviously, the text color and things like that as well. Um, so, yeah, you can customize that however you want it to look. It's the exact same, really, for the weather and the clock. You guys will figure it out. Um, then you want to come down here. You want to copy this link. So just click on this little thing and it copies it to your clipboard come back into Notion and you want to replace there and then embed link there. Or if you wanna add a new one somewhere where I haven't already added ones, you just go ahead, you click a little slash and you type embed and then you can just embed it there like so. So that's how you add in any widget. So yeah, I think then I've covered how to customize everything on here. If I've missed anything, um, please comment below and I'll let you know how I did it. But I think that's pretty much everything. So that is an overview of my Notion and how to customize it to suit your aesthetics. I hope you found everything in here useful. I hope you enjoyed the template if you decide to use it. Um, let me know if you will be using it and let me know if this video was useful. And if you have any more questions, please drop them in the comments below. Other than that, please make sure to subscribe and like the video and I will see you in my next video.